Today, we're going to finally understand what copulas are. Hey everyone, Tino here. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for joining me. So this is one that obviously bugged me for a long time. You know, I was uh, really intrigued by copulas sort of maybe you know, so 10, uh, 15 years ago. And I always sort of struggled to understand what they did really. Um, I guess most of the literature is just really verbose. It's just, you know, lots of Greek letters. Hello, do you want to play a game? Uh, really confusing actually. So it took a long time for me to really understand, uh, you know, grasp exactly what was going on. So um, once I did, which is actually so simple really, um, I thought, okay, let's just, uh, let's do a video. Let's try and help everyone else out. So we're gonna start, you know, uh, look at some uh, some, some graphics and uh, essentially go from there. So as always, if this is the first time here, my name is Tino, I cover stats, maths, statistics, finance, all good things like that. And uh, you know the drill, like, subscribe. All right, let's fire up a Jupyter Notebook. Boom, all right. So, um, copulas. So maybe before introducing copulas, just let's have a look at some data and uh, really what we tend to you know, do in terms of assumptions right when we are use something like correlation we're making some strong assumptions so let's have a look so all i'm going to do here is uh just i'm going to fix the seed so that actually it's all very reproducible uh have a little uh correlation matrix so with a mean of zero uh, a row so correlation coefficient of 0.8 uh, and then I'm actually going to use this uh, multivariate normal, MP random dot multivariate normal, to generate a thousand data points, right? I'm going to save that to norm one and norm two. Uh, I'm also going to transform to uniform, but that will come later on. So I'm just going to run that. And if I run the correlation of that, you can see that they are 0.8, right? So they are indeed as, uh, as I wanted them. And uh, what we can do, just have a quick scatter plot. And this is what the data looks like. So you've got, you know, your typical uh, histogram there, um, or, which is essentially normal. Another one normal. And this is, you know, it's just above area normal. There's not much. Uh, it's not much. Much really going on here. You've got. Um, I, I've got this sort of OLS line going through it, and that's is really what you expect, right? So really, most of it bunched up in the middle, which uh, this is whether it occurs here so you've got that big lump there and a big lump there and that's why you've got that uh, um, most of the scatter plots happening in the middle and so when we're doing when you're using correlation we are assuming that this is what the data looks like right so a it's 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 linear there's a linear relationship between them which means you know a line a straight line is the best thing for it right um and sometimes that might not be the case uh data isn't always normal and cover it another time this misconception that oh if i accumulate more data it's going to become normal it's like no it doesn't actually work like that um that sort of was misused quite a lot so in this case yes it's a bivariate normal correlation is you know linear correlation is the best thing for it so just a straight line uh, and that's pretty much it so what if the data looks different and this is pretty much what copulas allow you to do, right, is to really change what uh, these edge distributions, and these are called marginals, you'll hear something to do with marginal distribution. So there's really three components. One is the marginal, so essentially what goes on the edges, what does that edge distribution, forget, forget the other one, let's just look at this top one, right? This top one here, is it normal? Is it not? Is it student T? Gamma, beta, pick your distribution, right, it can look however you want and the same for the other one you don't they don't have to be the same and they don't have to be normal right so that's the first step which copies allow you to decouple uh, from each other and the third piece of the puzzle how do they interact together right so what is the structure that um, essentially best models how one um, one piece of data interacts with the other one right so in this case, it is actually, uh, so multivariate normal is the best thing for it. So a Gaussian distribution is actually the best thing for it. And I, I forced it to be like that. But let's see what happens if that is not the case, right? So I'm just gonna make up 
some dummy data here. Um, I've got an example. Look, you're on Amazon, your favorite shopping website, and you want to see what's the relationship between how much time he spent on the site and how much money you spend on the site, right? So let's just say you've got here time spent on site. So what I'm actually going to go and do here is have this a really nice distribution here. It's actually a gamma distribution. So I use this line up here, All right? Gamma, I've got some inputs. It doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to do something that's not your typical bell shaped sort of gas and distribution. And uh, yeah, pretty much like this. So you've got most of the Essentially, most of the people bunched up around here, so time spent is, I don't know, somewhere like in the sort of five minutes sort of thing, so, sort of five minutes spent on the website. And there is, you know, one observation up here. There's one person that spent 50 minutes on uh, on Amazon. And if they spend more time on Amazon, do they spend more money, right? That's really what we trying to want to try and understand, right? Um, so this is, this is just time spent on website. And, you know, it's a nice distribution, something slightly different, right? What about the dollars? How much you, money you actually spend on the website? And then we've got something like this, you know, really, really completely different to your typical bell distribution. You've got a big spike here and a big spike here. All right, so there's a lot of people that go on Amazon and they don't spend any money at all. You just have a browse and they're off. And that's why you've got the big spike here. But at the same time, there's actually a lot of people that spend like, let's just say, 100 bucks plus, right? Um, they just go in and just buy something really expensive. And then there's all these sort of uh, different observations in the middle. So it's just a nice sort of U-shaped curve or something like that. Uh, and this is actually a, a beta distribution with these parameters here. <coughs> right, so completely different uh, distribution, something slightly different. What do they look like together, right? So if I were to use this scatter plot between them, right? So this is essentially what it looks like. You've got that, that gamma, that beta, and it's yeah, it's really quite quite interesting because you've got, you know, I've got this sort of line of best fit through it. And is it the best? I don't know. It doesn't really account for anything to the right. Um, all these dots here are completely missed out. And if I were to actually calculate the correlation between them, it comes out as sort of you know 0.72. And remember, I've actually fixed this data at 0.8 so i know that the true correlation between them is 0.8 what is going on the issue here is i'm trying to use the wrong tool for the job the the relationship here is not linear first of all and secondly the marginals what's on the edges is not normal so obviously this is gamma this is beta uh, and that's why you get the sort of I and mean, this is what 0.1 off but you know this could have looked any this distribution could have been even you know, wilder if, if you wanted, and that number could have really drifted off, right? So your, your relationship isn't quite there. And there's also other, other nuances of the data, which you know, we'll, we'll cover uh, copulas capture. Um, let's just say, for example, like tail dependence, right? So it might be that two assets don't have a really strong correlation in the middle. So, you know, during day-to-day, -day, so financial assets, right? So during the day-to-day, -day, they don't sort of behave in a very correlated way. But when there's a, maybe a strong market movement, they both correlate. So the tails are actually really codependent. They move, uh, say, they're both down minus five, minus 10%. They are, that's going to happen at the same time. Very likely that that's going to happen at the same time, right? But if you were to look at the sort of the daily sort of normal day-to-day -day correlation, one's going up, one's going down, it does, there's not really much going on. So copulas allow you to sort of model that dependency as well, right? So what do you do about it? What if you have something like this and you say, look, uh, I want to use a better tool for it. So this is what I'm talking about, that decoupling, right, of these marginals. So what do I do? Copulas is really uh, an exercise in firstly identifying what the marginals are in this case, I clearly know what they are because I set them so, um, but there's sort of a bit of... Um so there's a bit of expertise, I guess, that is, is required. And there are a few programs out there which try, so you give them some data and they're trying to work out what they are. I guess you could do a bunch of tests. It's up to you really, but I think plotting it using your eyes is probably the best thing for it. So what you need to do is identify what the marginals are, right? So once 
if you know what the marginal is, what you can do is use something called a CDF or a cumulative distribution function, right? What does that even mean, right? So what you can actually do, let me just plot it and that will become very, very clear. A CDF allows you to map the input um, observations from, from your data into a space that goes from between zero and one. So uh, the lowest value that you, you observe will be a zero and the highest value is one. And this is this little curve that you observe is like sort of like an, like an S, I guess, right? Uh, this curve is that transformation. It's taking an input value from the bottom. So let's say 10. If you look at 10, we go up and it transforms it to just approximately like 0 0.6, right? So you can see the original and CDF there. And that's what the, the that's what this this uh, this function does. It takes an input variable in its original space. So in this case, um, time. So these are minutes. Transform those minutes into a zero one distribution. You think, well, why am I doing that? The reason for that is that it transforms it into a uniform distribution. So um, I could have had more data points, but approximately this on the right is actually a, a uniform. I think this yeah this plot will show it slightly better. This is essentially a uniform distribution. So it's, it should be completely flat. If I were to sort of simulate this for 10, 100 million data points, it would be completely, completely flat, right? So that's a great place to be, right? I've got my, it means I've identified my marginal really well. I've identified what is that distribution really well. Uh, and I've got this uniform distribution, which is like key to everything, right? Um, let's do the same thing for the dollars spent on the website. In that case, I know it's a beta distribution, so I'm gonna use the beta CDF to again, transform that data. So just as before, it takes those inputs between, you know, whatever uh, your dollars spent on the website and transforms them. So $40 uh, becomes approximately 0.4, right? So um, you've got that transformation that maps it from dollars to this zero one space. And again, it should be uh, completely uniform, completely flat. Let's plot this one here, should be a little bit easier to see exactly, right? So dollar spent on site, completely flat, right? Okay, all right, so what happens if I plot now these two uniform distributions against each other, right? So I'm just gonna plot it here, and this is what I get, right? So I've got uniform here, uniform there, and uh, I get this nice sort of, you know, the line works out pretty well, and you know, I could, I guess, potentially, now that I've got it in uniform, so let's actually have a look. The correlation is, that's it, you know, 0 0.79, appro approx approaching is at 0 0.8. Again, there's gonna be a margin of error here because this is, again, simulated data, which has, um, by its very nature, some sort of random element to it, right? But I've gone from something that was distributed completely differently than, you know, um, my, my assumptions made, which was, um, you know, beta and gamma distribution. I've then transformed those, I identified what those marginals are, what are those, um, what are those distributions on their own, transformed into a uniform distribution, and then I, I, I plotted them through this. I haven't actually technically fitted a copula to this, but this is like really simple, simple data. Um, I don't really have to. Uh, I guess the, the concept is there. So it's really an exercise in A, identifying what those uniforms are, uh, and then, you know, identifying, you know, what the relationship is here. I mean, this is was actually generated uh, from multivariate normal, so it's just gonna be just a straight line, right? There's nothing really special. Um, but, so the last piece, which I think is beyond sort of, you know, a nice introduction, keep it nice and sweet, is what different relationships can I have? And let's have a quick look. These are examples of popular uh, copula. So Gaussian is essentially what we just had above, right? So that's normal. Gaussian is exactly it. So um, more in the middle, less towards the edges, right? Um, you can have T, Frank. So you know, interesting ones are something like like a, like a, um, like a Joe, right? Joe has this sort of uh, tail dependence at the uh, right hand tail, right? I guess you could even have, and there are, I think I wouldn't say hundreds, but dozens and dozens and dozens of dozens of copulas, uh, all having slightly different characteristics. Uh, you know what the relationship is uh, in the in the tails. Um, so this one here, Joe copula has a really strong codependence in the right hand tail, right? So you see, sort of in uh, when when the market, let's say, you know, when the market's going down, they don't have really much of a correlation. And on the way back up, they 
these two items tend to really sort of uh, behave in a very similar manner, right? So all of these have slightly different ways of, uh, of behaving. And again, a bit of an art. Uh, you can do various tests to try and identify which one's which, but that's really it. So in its basic form, just getting data, transforming into a uh, a common language, that uniform data. Uh, and actually from that uniform, you can transform it to any other distribution that uh, that you want, which is, uh, which is awesome. It doesn't have to be kept in that, in that uh, uniform space, right? So when I actually went and generated this data, uh, I actually went from, you know, normal to, I went from normal to, to uniform using the CDF, right? Uh, but then I actually went from, um, from that uniform back to that uh, that distribution. So I went from say uniform to gamma because uniform is like your jumping spot to anything, right? Uh, and I use this and I use this this uh, little function here, this this PPF. It's like an inverse CDF, right? Uh, inverse CDS function, uh, in inverse CDF function, which allows you to flip from uniform to the distribution. Uh, distribution to uniform is just normal CDF, right? Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, there's so much more that we can cover with uh, with copulas, but in terms of a quick introduction, I hope this uh, this um, this is clear. It's a real deep and complex part of statistics and maths, and a lot of people don't tend to cover it because the literature is the the formulas are brutal. There's a lot of proofs and etc. But in its high level, um, I think this example is uh, pretty clear. Catch you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.